Hi, this is Rex Welch at RW Mods. <clears throat> Today I'm going to go over um, compression height, head shimming to get the optimum performance and reliability out of your engine. This is a uh, FX. I already rebuilt this engine so everything's really clean. It's, it's really important that you have a nice clean work area and uh, clean up the engine before you take it apart. Actually having a plan to just take everything apart and clean everything is probably the best but uh, blow off you know make sure you plug your your carb and your exhaust and blow it off really good any dirt around the head button and stuff can uh, get in there and get in the engine and it will uh, cause some wear and, and it's not good to get dirt in your engine today um, beautiful out I thought I'd do it outside here it's just uh, hard to beat the sunlight um, I've already taken the screws out of the back plate on this. Make sure your uh, piston is up. It doesn't have to be a top dead center, but make sure it's up before you remove the back plate. Otherwise it can catch on that uh, groove there in the back plate for the clearance. And the reason I take the back plate off is to get the piston at top dead center. Now you want to make sure you do this before you loosen any head screws. We're going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be holding the sleeve down. And I put a three millimeter screw in the end here. And then just uh, get your piston at top dead center. Sometimes it'll when you get the right when there's not much pinch, but it has good compression. It'll, it'll not want to stay at top. It'll want to roll over and pop down. And if you just uh, unscrew the plug a little bit, it won't uh, have that compression to keep it up there to pop it over. So I got the piston at top, top dead center. Just make sure you're kind of centered on there, and it's all the way up. And I'm going to take the head button off, or the head off. <clears throat> now I'm going to take the head button off. Sometimes these can be a little stubborn. And if the plug was loose, it might help too a little bit because it kind of locks on here with the, the air locks on here. Okay, we got that off. Make sure your head shims. There's no head shims on the sleeve here. So... As you can see, everything's really clean here. Um, this engine I rebuilt. When I rebuild an engine, I, I not only you know replace bearings or rods or whatever needs to be replaced, but I also polish up the piston top, get all the carbon buildup off of it, and I polish the the head button. Uh, I I try and get the the most uh, reflection of the heat, I guess. Um, to and it just it's it's a clean you know it makes a clean engine plus. It is uh, some benefits to having that reflection. So we got it at top dead center. And now we're just going to measure from the top of the sleeve down to the piston. Now some some engines have a dome piston. I, I usually just try and get it as close to the outside as I can when I when I measure the, the dome piston engines. So I just got a caliper here. I'm going to measure from the top of the sleeve down to the piston. Okay, I got about 131 thousandths. Okay, and then I'm gonna check, make sure you have all your shims on that, that came with the engine and that, that you've been using. And then uh, check down to, from the combustion chamber down to the shim. So I got about 102 thousandths there. Um, check a few different spots around it. Um, it. The top of the combustion chamber isn't flat and it, it, it can be, if you're not used to measuring stuff very often, it can be a little bit tough to get. You just have to make sure your caliper is really flat. Make sure your caliper is really flat on there and stuff. Um, a depth mic probably is ideal in this. Uh, a depth mic will go across the top and down to that. but. Um, usually the caliper works for me and I don't dig out my depth mic. So, going back, we got 131 thousandths from the, the top of the sleeve down to the piston. And then we had 102 thousandths, 103, on the head button to the shim. So, essentially, when the engine's running, we have 28, 29 thousandths clearance from the piston to the head button. And that's your compression height. And that's what I'm... That's about what I'm looking for. Some engines come, uh, I would say Novorossi's come with the highest compression. And they, 
Um, they have a dome piston also, and I've seen some around 24 thousandths piston head clearance, and and they do run fine if tuned well, but it's uh, it's it's kind of on the verge of of too much compression. Get in certain certain situations, maybe if you're on a little bit rich or whatever, it might be fine. Or if there's low traction, but to me, adding a four thousandth shim to that will put it up to twenty eight thousandths, and that's about ideal. Also, too, I, I get engines to rebuild, and they have a an OSP three plug in an over Aussie that's you know got the higher compressions. Not all do. I mean, it, that's why I'm t showing you how to check it. I, I the, some of them don't have, some of them are kind of in the sweet spot already. So, so, but I, I've seen some of the engines that come in for a rebuild and they, uh, they have uh, the top of the piston and the head button, the head combustion chamber on the head button, look like they've been sandblasted and that's, that's pre-detonation. So if you have a 24,000, say if you're down on the lower side of your compression height and you have put in say a P3, P4 plug or something, something that's a really hot plug, it's going to have pre-ignition or detonation. And what that is, it's, it's firing before the piston gets to the, top, to the top dead center. And then it's also hard on everything. Like That's sometimes why rod bushings come apart. I've, I've seen that where you take the motor engine apart, the rod's not broke, but the bushing is just in pieces. And, and that can cause, you know, the piston's coming up and it's it's firing before it gets to the top and it's, it's hammering on the rod and piston and it can cause broken rods, uh, bad, you know, bearings go out early. So it is hard on an engine to, to pre-ignite. So what I like is 28 to 30 thousandths. It's, it just makes a nice running engine. The, um, the higher, you know, the higher compression engines tend to run on at the end of the straightaway. The tuning window is a little bit smaller. They, they're kind of a little more erratic. Um, I've seen engines run at 35 thousandths and, and they just tune fine. Now, your compression height also has to do with your plugs, and like I said, if you have a, you know, 24,000 piston head clearance and you're running a P3 plug, it's just not going to run well. That's why the Novorossi's come with a colder plug. And, uh, and the colder plugs do have a little bit smaller tuning window also. Um, so, and it, it's not a, it's not ideal to cross, you know, a different brand. You know, run an OS plug in an over Aussie, but I have I, a few years ago. I did some research. I, I I'm a machinist, so I, I did um, put on the optical comparator and I checked the angles of you know five, six different plug manufacturers, and they all were very close in the angle, like within thousandths of a degree. And what what I found was you know because some people said they put an over Aussie plug in an OS and it didn't it didn't work. And uh, it leaked, and it ruined the head button or whatever. But the thing with Novorossi, um, between Novorossi, we'll just use the two biggest manufacturers, Novorossi and OS. This is an O'Donnell plug, but it, it's more similar to a uh, Novorossi plug. If you see the clearance, um, so it looks like there's less taper, right? But it's the same angle. It's it's le it looks like less taper because it's got a relief. And what I found was that the OS doesn't tap the threads down as deep, and they don't they don't tap the thread right down to the angle. They'll leave the the sh thread will be a little bit short, and then they have a little relief in their plugs. And um, so if you take a Novorossi plug and put it in an OS, the thread's going to bottom out before the taper hits, and it's not going to seal. So. I actually, you know, back in the day, um, didn't have a, a West plug or whatever, and I wanted to try it, whatever. And I, I took a, a Novorossi style plug, maybe it was an O'Donnell like this too, and just turned a little bit of relief on, and it worked fine. So, and I, I don't think you're really, I mean, sometimes the head button can get messed up, you know, like running different plugs, and it is a good idea to just stick with one manufacturer. Um, but if you get in a pinch, it, it might not ruin your day. It's it's not the end of the world to use a different plug and most times it will work. But I just thought I'd bring that up. And then uh, going back to the 
the power range, a, a hotter plug is going to give you something like a OSP3 is going to ignite the fuel when it comes, it's going to ignite the fuel a little bit sooner. So it's going to actually give you a little more bottom end. If you were to take the same engine, run a hot plug and then a cold plug, the hotter plug will have a little bit more bottom end. The, the colder plug will be a little bit smoother, uh, a little more top end. And that's just kind of changing your igni igni excuse me, ignition timing. Um, and that, that is a little bit of a way to uh, tune engines also. So I guess that's about all I have today. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, look up rwmods.com if you uh, need an engine rebuilding, sleeve resizing, modifying. Um, 